Hey horror fans, welcome back to 237, back with another review. Now this is kind of a random one, uh, this is one that is on Hulu. Uh, it's one I saw a while ago, probably four or five months ago, while I was in the transition of moving from the apartment to here. So there was a few films on Hulu that I checked out, that I meant to review, never got around to it. And a while back, I think I went through and did a couple of them. This is probably one of the better ones I checked out on Hulu, but never got around to. And it's from a director whose first film I actually saw on Netflix, and I very much enjoyed it. But this is another very, very well-made film. Uh, it is built around uh, a, a metaphor and uh, symbolism. It did receive quite a bit of acclaim, uh... Uh, I believe it was a choice for the fr French entry of uh, the Academy Awards, but I don't think it made it. But it did win the Palme d'Or, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, award at Cod Film Festival, which is their highest award. And it, it is the sophomore film by, I always mess up her name, Julia Ducournau, whose first film... Raw, I was a huge fan of, still a big fan of. I really enjoyed this film. Beautifully made, beautifully acted. Really like the symbolism and the metaphors within this. Very good modern body horror film. And this is another body horror film. This seems to be the director's niche. She really has a very uh, unique, different way to tackle body horror in a very realistic way. Realistic, but all, the way it goes about it is pretty surreal, if that makes sense. But this is her second film, and I've heard it pronounced a number of different ways. But what I've always called it is uh, titane, which is the French word for titanium. Uh, yes, this is known, I, I think this was known all over the internet uh, as the one where the female serial killer fucks a car. Yeah, like Raw, there's a lot of Cronenberg inspiration. Here you could probably pinpoint it even more. Uh, the film Crash by Cronenberg, uh, I did read was an inspiration on this film. <clears throat> but yeah, it, and that was all I knew about this film up until I saw it. But I had already seen Raw and I really liked her direction and writing for Raw. So just with that crazy concept and how I already felt about her previous work, I was very interested in uh, checking this out. Now, this stars uh, uh, Vincent Linden and um, Agatha Roussel, which this is her acting debut, and she did a wonderful job in it. Uh, Ruben M. Pens, if I pronounce that correct correctly, did the cinematography. Jim Williams uh, composed the music, and the score is fantastic. Uh, and it first premiered at Cannes in July of last year. So where this is still a very new film, it came out just last summer. Uh, and this is one that I highly recommend. I'm not going to get too much into the plot or sort of the meaning or analysis of it. Uh, I'll give a spoiler warning. But... This is very much a film, kind of like Parasite, where the absolute a minimum that you know about the film, the absolute best. Going in as blind as possible is the best way to view this film, because that's what I did, and it at a point, it just goes off, and you have no idea where it's going to go, and upon my first watch, I wasn't really sure what the director was trying to say. I mean, it definitely had a lot of meanings of you know, trauma, gender roles, uh, love and family, and sort of blood ties. But I wasn't quite sure what she was trying to say. Here, it, it was definitely, I don't want to say more obvious, but it, it was a lot more easier to uh, 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 digest. Wow. Now, yes, this movie was known at uh, film festivals that people were actually getting sick or fainting because of how 
grisly they thought it was. And this is a grisly film. I mean, I, I think a lot of people will watch this and be upset because it says body horror. And when people think of body horror, they seem they seem to think that means David Cronenberg, you know, not just Cronenberg, but like uh, uh, The Fly or John Carpenter's The Thing or newer films like Slither, just really grotesque, gross, very visceral films. But the way Ducournau tackles body horror is really just showing the grotesque grotesqueness of the human body as it is so you know like with raw just a vegetarian you know finding a love for meat and becoming a cannibal as she approaches a womanhood there's more to it than that but just very quick you know and this dealing with yes Oh, okay, the one thing I'll give away is she does get pregnant. She has sex with the car in the beginning. She gets pregnant. And uh, it's sort of the grotesqueness of pregnancy, which has been in horror forever. I mean, there's movies like uh, Rosemary's Baby or even body horror films like Cronenberg's uh, The Brood that really shows the horror and the just grotesque nature of pregnancy. And this does a great job with that. Again, I don't want to give too much away about the plot. But, yeah, I think a lot of people will think this is just a drama. Also, not even consider it a horror film because where body horror is just over-the-top grossness. Horror is jump scares every five minutes. And you have to have either a slasher killer or a haunted house. With, like, the big the black eyes, black mouth, mouth, and... You know, that's a horror film to modern audiences. You can't have a slow burn with a lot of symbolism and meaning and you know, you can't try to be deep and, and have the scares or the horror be within that metaphor. You know, it, it's got to be up front and just blah. It's still a body horror film in a very, very well done one. Uh, but basically, yeah. Well, before I even start to get into the plot and then spoilers, uh, everything about this movie is well done. Very well acted. Uh, there are some supporting characters, but it really is uh, of Agatha Roussel and uh, Vincent Linden. Those are really our two main characters that we follow. But even the supporting actors do a good job. The cinematography is great. The music is fantastic. Uh, yes, she is a serial killer. So the scenes where we get her killing people, especially in the beginning where she's in this house and there's like three or four people that she just kills back to back. It has this very clockwork orange type of stylization, like with these crazy camera angles and all, has a lot of tracking shots. There's a lot of beautiful well done tracking shots which I'm always a sucker for but that clockwork orange style like there's a part where she kills a guy with a stool like he's on the ground she's kind of pushing the stool down we see it kind of gets in his mouth but then we just pan up so we can't see him there's music playing on the soundtrack and when she just <clears throat> the music stops a lot of stylization like that that made me think of Clockwork Orange with all these crazy angles and tracking shots as well. Uh, the music throughout, especially during key points of the film, where you know it's just this very gothic church organ with this sort of choir chanting. Very well done. Uh, <clears throat> I think that's really all I can say before getting into spoilers. Because, yes, yeah, it opens up with the a young girl who gets in a car accident. She gets a titanium plate put in her head. And then when she's released from the hospital, she runs up to the car, hugs and kisses it. Then we skip ahead to where she's this exotic dancer at like a car show. 
no one else is around. She has sex with the car. And it doesn't show it. Again, even that is stylized. The car has hydraulics. And, you know, just kind of shows her sitting in the back seat. Hands wrapped around the steering wheel. And she just kind of bounces. And, you know, she gets thrills off a car. But also violence. Uh, uh, killing people. Which she always uses this hairpin. And then she realizes she gets pregnant. And the gest her gestation period is very rapid. And we notice her bodily fluids are now black, like oil. And that carries us to the rest of the film. That's as much as I'm going to give away. But this movie is, one, it's well made across the board. Very well written. It does not feel like it's pretentious or full of itself. Like a lot of people think when a movie tries to be deep or symbolic. Um, it, it, it is a slow burn, but the pace is very methodical. It, it does a very good job at pulling you in and keeping you in. And just at so many points, there's just these moments that will make you go like, oh, like that's going to change the course of the rest of the film. Will it or won't it? And... Like Parasite, you get to a certain point, it almost feels like a completely different movie. But that's really where a lot of the symbolism comes in. And I highly recommend it. If you were a fan of her first film, Raw, definitely check this out. But don't go into it thinking, you know, oh, body horror. That means it's going to be gross and nasty. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like the fly, but maybe like a car. No, it's... It's very, I really want to say a minimal when it comes to, you know, the actual visceral, you know, blood or gore or death or killing or just stuff that happens to the body. It's presented in a very realistic way. Only she got impregnated by a car and now all her fluids are oil and it seems like what's under her skin is also titanium, not just in her head. It just keeps building off that. So the exterior is done very realistically. The horror is everything else that I'll explain as spoilers. So highly recommend it. It's on Hulu. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a very deep, smart film. That's also just very well made, very well crafted. And I will see whatever films Julia DeCordo makes uh, after this point. So, spoiler starting now. One thing this tackles is trauma. Well, first, she has said that ultimately this is a love story. It's a movie about love. Whether that be uh, romantically or family. It seems to be mostly about family, family ties or blood ties. Or given family and chosen family. But... Also, it deals with trauma. And right off the bat, trauma, the car is what caused this accident, is what caused the plate to be put in her head. And it seems to be that, you know, again, I'm, I'm not a psychologist, but from what I've read and from what I've heard, people that go through these traumatic events and go down the self-destructive path, that seems to be what they're attracted to. And I'm just explaining this the best way I can. So if it's wrong, it's wrong. But, you know, a car is what put her in the hospital, gave her the plate. So now a car is what she's attracted to. And yes, uh, attraction to cars has kind of popped up more in recent years. Like My Strange Addiction or Strange Obsession, whichever one it was. Uh, uh, more... Uh, inanimate sexuality has come up more so in recent years. But yeah, the car is the catalyst for her trauma. So that's what she's attracted to. Kind of like, you know, you're abused, but then you kind of fall in love with someone that is like your abuser. They impregnate you and then the cycle continues. That's where I think it is just on that level. And then the whole body horror is that, yes, her 
her vaginal fluids and she lactates oil. She's incredibly itchy when she breaks the skin. We see there's titanium kind of everywhere now. So, but she also tackles uh, humanity, which, yes, even in Raw, see, she, and kind of the main theme in both films and probably what she'll continue to do, she tackles body horror in a very, uh, the very humanity of it. So she gets pregnant. She's by a car. She's a serial killer. She's now wanted. One of her victims got away, so now she's wanted. And while at the train station where there's cops everywhere, a composite sketch of her, she notices a, you know, a flyer of a child has been missing for 10 years, what he would look like today. So she goes to the bathroom, cuts her hair short, breaks her nose, which is a pretty well done scene as well and then tapes her breast and pregnant stomach down she's just starting to show at this point and tries to pass herself off as the grown-up version of this boy that's been missing for 10 years <clears throat> so the father played by uh, vincent linden captain of a fire department takes in adrian his son and where humanity plays into this is because when she... And then the rest of the movie is her trying to play off like she's this boy, the the captain's son, while also not trying to hide the fact that she's a woman, but also rapidly pregnant and pregnant with a car baby. Um... But we also see that, you know, her life's pretty cold and self-destructive before that. And when she was a, a woman, she was a dancer. She was shown as kind of dehumanized. She was a dancer. It was just looked at as an object like the cars. Even only, well, I was going to say feeling attraction towards cars, but she does make out with a few people uh, through, at the beginning of the film. But she was kind of dehumanized, and her family, her blood family, was very cold and uncaring of her. And she didn't really have any human connection to them either. While the captain, he, you know, he has a bodily secret as well. He fears his aging body, so he sticks himself with steroids. That's his secret. But he's also longing for human connection through his lost son. And even though this relationship is a lie, and also, you know, her identity is a lie, the more they accept and embrace each other, the more human they become. And I thought that was very well done. The humanity in both of them are brought out more the more this goes along. The more... She lives the life of Adrian and becoming accepted by the rest of the fire department or, you know, letting herself be the son to the captain, the more, the more of her humanity she gets back. Even at the point where she tried to terminate her pregnancy at the beginning of the film with her giant hairpin, her murder weapon of choice, we see her try to stick it inside her pretty we don't see anything but the sound design. It, it's still a, a grisly scene. She goes from that to actually being in the shower at one point and smiling and feeling the kicks and apologizing to the ba her unborn baby. So she gains more humanity, as does the captain. Also, a uh, whole idea of uh, gender roles. Because, you know, there's probably more to it than how I'm going to explain it. But, like, there are aspects of not conforming to stereo stereotypical gender roles. You know, like, uh, she she's living as a boy, but she's pretty androgynous. You know, she doesn't really have any defining features, male or female, you know, especially when she's all taped down. 
but also she's living as a traumatized mute, essentially. So she's not, you know, she's dropping her a, a femininity, but also not becoming very masculine. Also, the captain seems to be happiest and seem to be getting more fulfillment out of life when he's dancing. You know, there are scenes where he's dancing and he looks genuinely happy. Even some of the scenes where some of the dancing is kind of, for lack of a better term, a, a homoerotic. So that is not conforming to stereotypical masculinity. And also, you know, even though she's going to the film as a pregnant woman, she's still not conforming to the stereotypical, her stereotypical uh, of, of femininity. She's sh shedding all of it. She opens up the film with it, but she sheds it. And, and then we have, you know, sort of the metaphor of uh, family connection, human connection. You know, her birth family, cold, distant, no real connection whatsoever. And then the captain, she really does get this fatherly figure that does love her. And then she starts to feel more love towards him. And I, I think it eventually turns into an actual romantic love. Because at one point, he walks in the bathroom and realizes she has breasts. Which I do want to say, they did a fantastic job making her look pregnant. Uh, I don't know what kind of effects they use, but it it, it looked very convincing. <clears throat> you know, he tells her, I don't care who you are. You are my son. Almost as if to say... I've accepted you into my life. I love you as my son. And also you you filled the void, essentially. But then, you know, yeah, right before she gives birth, she tries to kiss him and he gets freaked out. But, so this fake family or this uh, non-organic family is more humane, loving, and there's more of a connection there than the birth family. And yeah, he doesn't have his real son. Granted, he's still missing, but it's still sort of the false, you know, not really her dad, not really his son, but they they found a connection. And then when she finally gives birth, he's, she dies. And there is a bit kind of like in Slither where we just see like her skin starting to split. And it's all shiny titanium underneath. Done with CGI, but it, it looks really good. And, you know, he's holding the baby, saying, like, I'm here, it's okay. As if it's his own. So, it's kind of like he gets his child back, almost. And, this isn't really a flaw, or I wouldn't even call this a nitpick, but... I was thinking maybe it would have been more effective if they went the Rosemary's Baby route. And they didn't show the baby at all. Granted, they don't show its face. He's just kind of laying there holding it. We can see the side of its head has titanium. And its spine is titanium. So it's it's carried over through to the baby. But I, I was thinking about how it might have been more effective if they just did show it. Like how titanium or how car-like is it? And just that kind of what you don't see being more grisly or scarier. Uh, so uh, I think that's all the symbolism. But some other scenes that really stood out was... Uh, I, think the, I think it's when she's trying to terminate her pregnancy. Just the way... If that's one of the first ones with just that really great score with like the choir and everything... If not, I don't remember what the first scene was, but after she has sex with the second vehicle, which is a fire truck, which also, yes, don't think this is just going to be like a continuous thing where she just keeps having sex with cars throughout the film, which I thought it was going to be. No, it's a car in the beginning, and then it's a fire truck at the end. After she has sex with the fire truck, and she seems to be going into labor, and she's trying to get to the captain's room, 
that whole sequence is so beautifully shot and lit. I mean, there's this excellent wide shot of her walking outside. I mean, she's like far away, so she's walking outside, it's like this grass field. It's like this gray overcast, but it's lit very well. And you you just got that sort of dramatic, climactic, almost like impending doom sounding, you know, organ with that choir chanting. And then we just cut to her on all fours, crawling towards the camera. Just beautifully executed scene. Pretty much the whole film is shot extremely well. And anytime there's score, I, the soundtrack is well done too. I mean, there's a song by the zombies in there, which is what the captain dances to. But, um, oh, which speaking of dancing, I guess another not conforming to stereotypical gender roles, another dance scene when they're all the, the firefighters are partying. They all throw Adrian up on a fire truck and want him to dance. But Adrian starts dancing like the exotic stripper that Alexia once was. So it looks like this androgynous guy sort of dancing like a female stripper. And they're all kind of weirded out by it. But uh, just something else that popped in. So yeah, very well made film. Uh. I don't know why I'm holding that up. Yeah, I am a sucker for more, more elevated, I guess, horror films or ones that are more artsy or of uh, allegorical, uh, uh, metaphorical or symbolic. I mean, that's why A24 is my favorite modern horror company. But a lot of times, yeah, there's a lot of symbolism that doesn't land, but I thought each bit landed in this film. The, the writing and the acting, especially for the first film actress uh, of uh, Agatha, Agatha Roussel, excuse me, very well done. Everything about this movie is very well done. All the metaphors made perfect sense, and it did create this very moving, powerful story. I would probably still say uh, I liked Raw more as a film. However, I do think uh, Tea Today is just as strong and well done with its messages as Raw. I just happen to think this, uh, I liked this more as a film. But it is just as well made. So yeah, I'm very excited to see whatever Julia DeCornell directs in the future, writes and directs in the future. If she keeps on this path of you know, showing the grisly grotesqueness of human, the, the nature of the human body, but with some sort of metaphorical spin on body horror, I'm all for it. Yeah, great movie. I really enjoyed it. Uh, thank you for watching. Oh, oh.